signed their names to the inside of this plaque. I see a Masonic emblem. I see Kenneth Chinquette, who's here with us today. Nice to see you. Thank you for being here. I see Alton Chuck Chinquette's name, Jack Russell, Ivel Chinquette, Charlie Chinquette. I'm starting to think that maybe the Chinquette family was all here when we put this together. <laughs> Morton Humphrey, Pat Matthews, Harris Matthews. I saw his son here today. Oh, this is wonderful, wonderful. Sure. So some of you may not know me. My name is Michael Lynch. I moved here in 1966 when I was about this big. In 1969, when the sesquicentennial was getting started, my dad happened to be the president of the Kiwanis Club. So I had a chance last weekend to sit with him, help me understand what was going on 50 years ago in this wonderful town. Some of you may remember, some of you may not, but the Kiwanis Carnival took over Main Street. They got special dispensation from the state of Maine to shut down Route 100 and had the entire carnival happening there. So there was no way to get back and forth for three or four days while it was happening. The gentlemen in town were asked, or maybe they were required, to be a part of the Bearded Brothers group, and they had to get a certificate. This certifies that Sanger Cook was a member of the Bearded Brothers. It was signed by Burton Hammond and Ralph Gould gentleman that I knew well in my childhood. Sanger Cook was the author of the Pittsfield on the Sebasta Cook book that many of you have seen inside. Burton Hammond was an insurance agent many, many moons ago. And Ralph Gould, whose daughter is here today somewhere, I saw earlier. There she is. Hi, Lenny. Um, ran the Montgomery Ward, among other uh, many other businesses in town back during the day. Now, for those that were not able to be a part of the Bearded Brothers Club, there could be four reasons why you may not have been able to be a part of the club. Maybe it's a physical impossibility 50 years ago to grow facial hair. Maybe your wife wouldn't let you. Maybe you were afraid to spoil your good looks or the boss wouldn't allow it. So if you were not part of the Bearded Brothers Club, you had to pay a fee to be part of the Smoothies Club. <laughs> The Embers Restaurant, which used to be located south of town on Route 100. Dave Mercer, one of their uh, placemats from many, many moons ago. Sesquicentennial Bells. Who can tell me about the Sesquicentennial Bells? Was anybody here back 50 years ago? I was seven. I think my mother was one. Maybe Jim may have been one of the members. This is to certify that as a member in good standing of the Honored Society of the Sesquicentennial Bells, they are entitled to the privileges thereof, being civic minded realizing responsibility and furthering the success of the Pittsfield Sesqu Sesquicentennial celebration. They were wearing membership buttons at the time. Elaine Wilkins and Betty Susi were the chairperson, uh, the chair people of the organization, and it ran between June 14th and June 21st, again back in 1969. Were some of the posters of the celebration back on Saturday, June 21st. Parade members. I'll leave all these things to be on display for people to see themselves. The Grand Marshal of the parade, the main army guard, an auto truck that was donated by Friend and Friend Oil of Newport. The Anna Temple Shrine Band was here to play. Frank Hessdorfer brought his Model T runabout. The Queen Canada, Joyce Allen, a 
another Lorna Boomer. There was another queen candidate. I think she's here. Carol Daly, or was Carol Daly here uh, 50 years ago as a queen candidate? I there. Now I'm Carol Daly. Nancy McGinnis, Marion Mosier. There was some moisture in the, uh, in the time capsule over the years. We're not sure, we don't think water got into it, but there were several things that were printed back then. Ink was different, quality of paper was different. There was a 1,200 page Montgomery Ward catalog inside, and I'm sure there was quite a little bit of moisture that went in with the, uh, the packing. I'm gonna leave these all out to be seen, but somewhere, I saw some writing on the back. There's one. Ah, uh, there was a sesquicentennial golf tournament. And I believe there's going to be a bicentennial golf tournament. The theme was early American transportation. The golf tournament was open to all high school graduates and up. Three divisions, low gross, low net. Things haven't changed much except the price. The, the entry fee was $2.50, and for women it was $1.50. I guess they were looking for more people to join. The committee was made up of Willard Lear, a longtime business person here in town, and John Dana, who also ran the golf course so many, many years ago. Ah, the Valley Times. Who remembers the Valley Times? Excellent. I delivered it from 1974 to 1980-ish. Yeah. Wonderful. Talking about the sophomore class taking up, picking up on cleanup day in Pittsfield. The Legionnaires are celebrating the 50th anniversary. Local firemen are burning in major blades. Highlights of NCI's graduation for the postgraduate class. Oh, this is wonderful stuff. And also, the Civil Air Regulations and Flight Standards for Pilots by Aero Publishers, donated by Alton Chinquette, uh, who is known as Chuck. Procedures and techniques to go with pilot safety. Written exam to become a private pilot back in 1959. So these were even 10 years, 10 years prior to such. There was a business on Main Street many, many years ago. Maybe somebody can help me with the name of it. In this picture, I can recognize a few faces. One being Bill Varney, Val Varney, Mark Bickford, Kevin Bickford, Lori Ring. The William, Libby, Barney, and family from November of 1968. They lived on Waverly Avenue. Hey, I got many of them right. Uh, they were grandparents of uh, George Edward Barney, Arden and Arlene Havey, Wendell and Eva Bickford. Great parents that were living back then were Ray and Flora Badger, as well as Earl Havey. Wonderful family photo that survived 50 years. 10 feet underground down in Manson Park. Uh, we have a Montgomery Ward catalog, uh, catalog. Things were different back then. Uh, yes. So, over the last 20 to 25 years, I've had the pleasure of traveling to the North Main Woods with a wonderful family. Chinkat Brothers Inc. business card in my hand was from Alp Chinkat, Vice President, and he also spent time at Nugent's up on Chamberlain Lake. I am guessing that there was a picture that was involved at one point, but it says the catch of fish was taken from Chamberlain Lake in February of 1968 by Bud, Ken, Carl, Norris, and Chuck Chinkat, Bud Homestead, from Bud Shop and Save, Willard Lear, Bob Maynard, Jim Christie, Ralph Gould, and Pat Riley. Wonderful names from my childhood.
This is some of the history of Chinkat Brothers, now known as Chimbro. Meeting the challenge. This was again 50 years ago. Wonderful memories. It's nice to see a business that continues to be local, continue to grow. Picture of Bob Desjardins, Norma Rogers, Opal Emery, Glenna Sprague, the payroll clerk, receptionist, secretary. Okay, wonderful. Canadian Club. <laughs> Hiram Walker and Sons. This whiskey is six years old. Well, now it's 56 years old. 86.8 .8 U.S. proof. This bottle, this bottle of whiskey is left from the chairman, or for the chairman or equal, of the current bicentennial celebration. <laughs> and since we don't have one, maybe I will know. <laughs> the, the wonderful part of this year's uh, celebration, the, the, uh, the Bicentennial Committee started to get together more than two years ago and it worked towards what's happening today and this week uh, and throughout the year. And what a wonderful thought. For some reason I kind of knew when I saw the bottle, this also came from Chuck Chinquette because that was his drink of choice 50 plus years ago. But the committee has worked hard this year to make sure that they work as a committee. And from what I'm understanding, there was no chairperson. So if it's okay with you folks, the bottle will not be opened. It will go in the next time capsule. And 50 years from now, somebody will be able to uh, uh, maybe enjoy some libations because maybe there'll be a chairperson at that point. If not, we could do it right now if anybody's thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> so, some of this, this is all a surprise to you folks, but a few days ago, we chose to open the time capsule to see what had survived and what may not have. And as a result, we packed and repacked, so we had a little idea of what was going to be in here. As we, as you see with the uh, covered pieces coming out, that was not something that was in there for 50 years, or it may have been a little tarnished in its coloring. But what I, uh, again, I, I haven't looked through all of the detail, but this is a letter to Stevens. Stephen Keith Bowden or any of his children. Sadly, by the looks of the envelope, the moisture may have attacked the letter that's inside, but if we have any people here from that family, please step forward uh, in a little bit. This is a, it looks like it's an old movie from Norman and Flora Jackson and Joyce Daly. <laughs> to our descendants, June 21st, 1969. In asking around, knowing one of the dailies from many moons ago, Norman Jackson, I believe, owned a construction company off Waverly Avenue. Uh, his wife, Flora, may have made a magnetic recording tape, single, uh, splice-free, and it's fully guaranteed. <laughs> so, it says right on the package. So if there are any de um, any descendants of that family, it would be great if somehow this has not been opened. Don't want the air and don't want the sun to be on it for very long. I'd like it to get in the hands of somebody that might be able to see if this is a movie from back so many, many years ago. More business cards from Chuck Chinkat. I think he had something to do with sealing the container. B.B. <laughs> Collins' son. Uh, Blake Bartlett was a son-in-law. Aubrey Call, whose name I saw on that engraving, 
uh, was his father-in-law. They owned and operated the monument business for the cemetery for generations. It has just recently left uh, left that family. But here is a, a notepad from way back when. We have a pair of The box has seen better days, but the earrings don't look too bad. If somebody like, they look like they're pearls. They are pearls from. They are for Deborah Jacobs in the year 2019. Anybody know Deborah Jacobs or anybody from that family? I guess somebody left a Christmas present that would be open many, many years into the future. Way back when there was. Uh, the sesquicentennial, they had memorable plates uh, put together to memorialize the event. Wooden nickels, sesquicentennial, brothers of the brush. I think I heard a story that at the end of the sesquicentennial celebration, Stan the Barber, who was still on Main Street, was offering discounts for shavings and haircuts for all the gentlemen who grew the facial hair that had not, uh, did not know how to get it off at that point in time. So they went to see, uh, they went to see Stan the Barber, who's still there most days of the week at this point in time. And also, I'm not sure what the meaning behind this is, but a red ribbon from the sesquicentennial of 1969. Norma Jackson again sent us a postcard. Some call it Norma Jackson, subcontractor for Bridge Construction Company, built this bridge in 1957 and 1958. Somewhere down on the ocean because I see old lobster boats. Automotive parts and accessories. New England Construction Magazine, the Main Trail. The Honorable Andre Richard, Minister of the Public Works and Highways for the Province of New Brunswick. So I guess they wanted to be a part of the celebration also. We have a bumper sticker. Pittsfield, Maine, Sesquicentennial. June 14th through the 21st, 1969. At least they had the bright colors way back when. <laughs> I wonder who didn't pay the real estate real estate taxes in Pittsfield in 1968. <laughs> we have the annual report. <laughs> Anybody here? Anybody nervous? <laughs> New England Construction. <coughs> Ooh, a sesquicentennial book. This is what was going on. They were available for a dollar. How much are they this year? Twenty-seven fifty. Citizen. Oh, letters from. Oh, Jim Hannigan. He was the town manager back in nineteen sixty-nine. Uh, knew him for many, many years, some close friends with his, uh, with his daughters today. Peter Gulick was the editor who worked at Maine Central Institute back in its day. Still close with the Gulick family after all those years. Oh, this is wonderful. I saw a, uh, a catalog from Church Goods, CML me. At that point, it was 77 years old, 50 years ago. And so we, oh, the trumpet yearbook from MCI. Class of 69, just before my time.
reflections. Ah, this was a time when the town had a, uh, how do we say this gently? People were graduating from Warsaw as well as MCI back in those few years. And this is a yearbook called Reflections from the Warsaw Rebels in 1968-1969. Some of you folks may remember those days way back. As you can see, the moisture did the damage on some of these things. Ah, oh, yeah. There's the vestments hanging in metalware of church goods manufacturing. At the time, Ryan Fendler was president. Still here in town, still run by the family with Michael Fendler at the helm. Ah, yes. So over the last 10 days to 12 days, we've been in a, these, all of these papers have been in a secure hiding place to dry out, to allow for some of them to be opened while others are still sealed shut from the moisture. I'm guessing that's the Montgomery Ward. Oh, it's the Blue Book of Quality Merchandise Ooh. from 1969. Yeah. Everybody want to check some price? prices against things today? But as you can see, the folks 50 years ago wandered around to some of the businesses, some of the educational facilities, maybe a local watering hole. They tried to put, a, get, put together a flavor of what was happening in this wonderful town uh, in 1969 and, and shortly before that. One of the things that we're looking forward to doing is putting another time capsule together. And our expectation is things that will be placed from you folks, people in the community, ideas, maybe a flip phone, which is already old, maybe an iPhone if somebody wants to uh, donate. Uh, the technology of today, those sorts of things that are known that we're not seeing here, and maybe some of the simpler things, maybe a baseball, maybe a frisbee, maybe other pictures. In today's world, when people are putting together these time capsules, they're no longer burying them 10 feet underground, below the water level, into the frost of the uh, the frosty times of the winter, because of moisture, because of what we can see here. I'm so glad that many things here came through without much trouble. Some things, as you can see, are damaged. There are family items here. If any of the descendants are here from what I had described a few moments ago, please step forward. We're going to display these a little better. We'll find a little less chaos on the table. And I'm going to turn the, uh, the table back over to you. I was going to shake your hand. But... <laughs> there may be a little... Um, odor coming from this table from many years of closed yeah, if you're on this side of the audience that smell i showered this morning <laughs> and there, so there is a little story about what happened and you've kind of gotten the idea that we yes we did open it up beforehand because we wanted to see what the condition was inside and everything that was taken out of here that you saw today was in there so nothing was replaced and it's all original Nothing was added. What you see is what you get. We're going to kind of try to keep it around for a little while longer. And maybe come up with some, as, as Mike just said, some ideas for next year. Before we move on, I'd like to introduce Brad. He has, I was going to say words of wisdom from Augusta. Is that, a, is that an oxymoron? That is an oxymoron, especially after what's been going on down there the last few months. <laughs> There you go, that's good. Well, thank you for the invite here, and I just wanted to, uh, Representative Stroms here as well, is uh, we were there late last night, and the Senate President delivered it to my desk at 9.30 last night, so we've been running around and getting together. But just wanted to present this uh, today. It's uh, in the year of our war, 2019, a joint resolution commemorating the bicentennial of Pittsfield. Whereas the town of Pittsfield was originally incorporated as Warsaw, Massachusetts in 1819, and it was renamed Pittsfield in 1824 in honor of William Pitts of Boston, a large landowner in the town, 
And whereas early settlers made their money as farmers, blacksmith, and sawmill workers, and whereas Maine Central Institute was established in 1866 by the Reverend Orrin B. Cheney and the Reverend Ebenezer Knowlton, and continued to serve as a local school for area students as well as boarding students, and whereas in 1855 a railroad came to town playing a significant role in the growth of the town, and whereas in 1869, one of the state's earliest woolen mills was established in Pittsfield, and later woodworking and canning factories were established, providing jobs to local residents, and whereas in 1895, water service was established through the creation of the Pittsfield Water Works, and in 1900, electric power was brought to the region through the formation of the Pittsfield Electric Light and Power Company, and whereas the Civil Works Administration assisted the town as part of the New Deal by providing $25,000 to construct an airport that was used by the United States Navy for training from 1943 through, 43 through the end of World War II, and whereas during the 1930s, Chimbro, a bridge building firm, opened in Pittsfield and continued to be a well-respected construction company managing projects as far away as Texas, and whereas Potomac Acres, a housing development for rural workers, was built in 1946. And whereas Sebastopol Valley Hospital was built on Grove Hill in the 1960s, it continues to provide health care services to the community. And whereas Interstate 95 was constructed in 1964, making Pittsfield a prime location for rest stops between Southern and Northern Maine, and a motel, restaurant, gas station, and shopping center in a large part to remain in existence today for use of residents and people passing through. And whereas Pittsfield is home to the Central Maine Egg Festival, which is celebrating its 47th year now, therefore be it resolved that we, the members of the 129th legislature, now assembled in the first regular session on behalf of the people we represent, take this opportunity to commemorate the 200th anniversary of the town of Pittsfield and be it further resolved that suitable copies of this resolution, duly authenticated by the Secretary of State, be transmitted to the Pittsfield Town Office. Like I said, it was the last night, it was a little bit late, so I've got the copies here. We'll get them framed out and get them back over to all the residents over here. So thank you for the opportunity to present this, and it's uh, really a great A lot of other companies, a lot of other organizations in town that are celebrating significant years. We have one that we'd like to present this morning. Okay. My name is Michael LeBlanc. I've been in town eight years, so I don't know all of you, but I'm representing the Pittsfield Bicentennial Celebration Committee. And one of, one of the head things that we uh, have to celebrate is this library. Carnegie Library and is celebrating 125 years. Uh, a few years back, my partner, Rosalie Williams, and a cadre of very capable people put an addition on the building. And uh, it's become a great resource for the community, people of all ages. It's a bustling place. I'd like to present this ribbon and certificate to Holly Williams, the treasurer. directors and librarians. Uh, we're very happy to make this presentation. Colleague.
go, but get out at all. The day starts on Wednesday with a community breakfast beginning at 7. Sponsors are in the hospital, so if you get up there, that's great. The events downtown here will begin around 2.30 in the afternoon. Uh, so if you can get out of work early, uh, if you need a written note or something, get one of the executive committee members to write you a note so you can get out of work early. Um, and we'll hopefully we'll see you on Wednesday. And we'd like to thank Pete and all the work that he's done. And the last thing that we'd like to do this morning, unless there's something else, is to... Yes. There is something else. The last thing I'd like to do is to make sure that you get some cake over here from Papa Noah's.